So basically today I just want to talk about everything you need to know about the bow. Specifically for PvP, I'll have a PvE video coming soon. I'll be going over the gear perks and stats rundown for Season 1, ability combos slash where you want to put your weapon points, playstyles and tips, combat styles, and final just final notes at the end as well. So basically the first thing we want to do to get started is the gear perks stats rundown. So here as you can see on the left side of the tree, uh, first I want to talk about the outdated perks and armor um, going into season one. So we had a couple of changes with a lot of the weapon perks that the bow used, specifically starting with mortal empowerment. Mortal empowerment got changed so it goes away after two minutes instead of 15 minutes. So now you really have to have uptime with kills. It's just very hard to maintain and very inconsistent. So it's going in the trash uh, until it, get, it gets buffed or whatever but it's definitely not what you want to go or play. Mortal Empowerment is dead, no more need for that. Same thing with my last build is actually Shirking Fort. Shirking Fortification on Light Armor is now very bad as well. Uh, you definitely don't want to run it anymore. It basically does nothing. And there's a lot of different videos online about Shirk Fort and why it's so bad on Light Armor compared to Medium or Heavy. Also Keen, Keen is also not as good. Um, especially like people I know used to run Champion's Ring and Keen on the bow or you know just Champion's Ring with Keen awareness but you don't want that anymore either because of the crit changes. I'll just talk a little bit more about that when I get to the bow uh, specifically Vicious but yeah just know Keen, Mortal Empowerment, and Shrinking Fortification are all not good with the bow build anymore. So here as you can see on my screen I have the Season 1 Best in Slot bow build and this will be in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Um, I have the ideal setup for exactly what you want to look for on your perks and armor. First, I want to talk about the perk priorities. So the first perk that you want to prioritize always on top is resilient. And now this patch, you can go either four or five, whatever you feel comfortable with. Me personally, I'm going four just so I can get an extra a perk elsewhere. Uh, but four or five is good, exactly what you need. After that, you're definitely going to need aversions, um, whether that is a mix of elemental and physical, whether it's full elemental, um, here on my build, again, like I said, I did, I think three elemental, two physical is the best. I think whatever it comes down to is up to you. Just you want five aversions for sure this patch. It's just, it keeps you alive way longer and it's overall a damage decrease from any bow or fire staff or whatever elemental weapon uh, damage that's ranged. Uh, third would be weapon perks, um, specifically on the for the bow itself, empowering explosive arrow and penetrating rapid shot. Now obviously it comes down to what build you like to play, what abilities you like to run in your build. So like maybe you don't like rapid shot, you could replace this perk with energizing evade shot which is also very good. You know when you uh, evade you get stamina on hit. Um, so yeah, so it's a resilient aversions, weapon perks and then finally we have refreshing or refreshing evasion. Basically cooldown reduction, right? Um, so that's like the last thing you want and if you're really going for bis, I'd say that's like What you want to get on your armor lastly, I have two pieces of refreshing here on the light boots and As well as the gloves because it's just extra perks that I had open You can also replace these perks with say like spear weapon perks or rapier weapon perks, right? But like I said those two extra uh, cooldowns are nice and whether you want to go refreshing or refreshing evasion doesn't really matter, you know like everybody knows refreshing is for both weapons and refreshing evasion is better for one specifically the bow so um, but i will be going for refreshing if i can uh, another perk that i didn't really mention but you should just always have as a staple is shirking energy uh, it's free stamina on a roll and it's just like why would you not have it you know what i'm saying i think this is a very valuable perk and a lot of people sleep on it but it's definitely just nice to have extra stamina every six seconds or you know like a 25 stamina roll uh, instead of a 40 stamina roll right so I think this perk is essential and is like just needed in every build you want on light and yeah moving down to the jewelry we have here thrust protection health stamina recovery this is as good as it gets you probably don't want anything besides this uh, amulet in different situations like small scale and such I will be using champions amulet as well thrust protection is just nice overall in OPRs slash wars this is mainly the amulet I'm going for but like I said if you want more damage and you want like a, a true best in slot and not have to worry about a specific class like like bows right um, you could also go champions amulet 
And you know, Thirst Protection also helps against uh, Spear and Rapier as well. Moving on down to the ring, the two perks here that you want for sure is Thrust Damage, Invigorated Punishment. Hardy does nothing for the bow. It actually is detrimental because of Stamina Recovery, where if you accidentally stamina, like use all your stamina up, and this procs, you won't actually be able to roll instantly because you'll have to regain the 12 extra stamina, and it just feels really odd and not nice at all. So definitely don't want Hardy on your build for sure. Um, but like I said, refreshing, even like what I would personally go for is leeching. I, I think leeching has some value. Though one of those two is fine. Moving down, we have the earring, refreshing toast, nimble, staples, and like again, refreshing is an extra perk that you can have. You can also replace it with something like purifying toast or healthy toast as well. But again, it comes down to your preference. Now for the jewelry, they all have two perks that you will need if you can't afford or don't want to get spend all your money on a three perk this for your set. You definitely want health and protection for your amulet. For the ring, you want thrust and invig. For your earring, you want refreshing toast and nimble. So that's what you would want for the two perkers. For nimble, I know it's an it's been an argument that it doesn't have any effect and it actually only helps your stamina recovery by 0.1 seconds. But like I said in all my other videos, I can notice it personally, along with the stalwart, a total of 30% stamina recovery. And it's also just a great counter to any exhaust in the game, such as the blunderbuss net, it's automatically ten minus 10%, as well as the hammer abilities that exhaust you as well, and anything else, right? I just think there's no better perk than nimble that you would replace, because you can always get refreshing toast, purifying toast, and nimble like nimble is just a great third perk that you just want for sure as a bow you want as much stamina as you can get which is why i value striking energy and nimble so much moving on to the weapon we have enchanted keeling powered attunement is the hands down best dps bow in the game right now i am play testing with bowman's pride a little bit but i'll have a i'll have that in a future video as well but enchanted keeling powered attunement is what you want depending on the mode right i think keeling powered and Killing Jagged goes side to side where you can use whichever one you want depending on your situation, right? So I think in wars, in OPR, sometimes in arenas, de depending on what you're fighting, Killing Powered is most likely going to be better. For things like duels or small scale PvP where you think that extra dot damage is going to help, uh, Jagged is there and is a good alternative to Killing Powered, especially because it'll stay when you switch your weapons compared to Killing Powered disappearing when you switch weapons. So you definitely want one of those two. Attunement is a staple. It's free damage on any hit with any ability or auto attack. You definitely want Attunement. And lastly, Enchanted. Now, there's been some talk about the whole Vicious Enchanted differences. Stat-wise here, as you can see up here, the difference in Enchanted and Vicious is minuscule, but I just think that Enchanted being more consistent, way better as a perk over Vicious. If you guys don't know what happened with the crit changes in Season 1, there will also be a link in the in the description below explaining everything about the crit changes the full rundown you crit less and crits do less damage that that's all you need to know that's that's really all you need to know right crit less crit le and do less damage with crits vicious is still a great second and it's not like it's bad in any way but i'm just saying this is a full se season one bis build right enchanted is definitely what you want but Vicious is not so far off either. And I'm not going to go into the secondary. I just have the Officer Ceremony here because it's what I'm ro rocking right now. But I will go into depth about bow pairings later in the future as well. As for the Heart Rune, so previously I was running Cunning Heart Rune of Stone Form, which gives you Fortify when you're hit up to 30%. But you definitely don't want that anymore with the Fortify changes because in most cases it's actually a debuff rather than a buff for your character. So you definitely just want the healing mending stone form if you don't like stone form that's completely fine i just think it saves me in situations a lot and it's just an, it's basically a second life like you cannot die with this heart root activated but you know if you wanted to play something like vines or detonate that's fine too it doesn't really matter too much this is what just i'll be running in wars lastly i want to talk about the gems here and all in all with the armor total it would be 16 percent thrust and four percent physical like slash and strike uh, along with the amulet as well which is very important you have a total of 26 percent thrust resist and moving down to the fire absorption it's a total of 18 percent so you will be at 26 percent physical 18 percent fire and another thing that's recently come into the meta that everyone's been talking about i actually don't have it displayed here but it is the fire absorption 
potions. Those are very important for this meta, especially with all the fire stats running around and how gemstone is just way worse than what it was last patch, again, due to the fortifying stuff, right? And last thing I want to talk about, sorry, last thing. Arboreal Gambit with Opal is what you want. You want Opal with some kind of bleeding damage just for the fact that it procs mark is very important and the fact that slotting a elemental gem in your bow gets negated by elemental aversion now even if you have like say a void gem in your bow most people are running full elemental aversion so you're getting that damage like mitigated anyways along with the elemental damage from the actual shots not counting towards arrow multipliers so what i'm saying is you know how 40% of your damage is converted to Bissell. Well, actually, that damage does not get amplified by Orichalcum Arrows, which is 0.20. But you definitely, definitely just want an Opal in your bow moving forward for Season 1. Alright, next up I want to talk about is the weapon combos that you can use. Specifically, what I mean this is like what builds you can use for the bow, depending on what activity you're playing. So here is the first build shown on screen is the pen shot explosive arrow and rapid shot this is the best war build right now at the moment uh, there's no better perks you could take other than this and it's just overall the best raw dps output for you know the kill squad or whatever heal you're trying to burst down or even like whatever bruiser you're trying to burst down this is exactly the build you want um, obviously you don't have a vade shot but you don't really need a vade shot in wars and moving on here on display is the second build, which is the Evade Shot, Rapid Shot, and Penetrating Shot build. I like to run this specifically in duels because of the Evade Shot, Rapid Shot tech, which I will explain later on in the video about how to use each ability. But this is the build that you want for um, if you like to play Pen Shot, Rapid Shot, and Evade Shot. This is the one I like to run the most in OPR and as well as Arenas because it has high burst and also has good survivability because of a vade shot being there in the mix and it's not just purely raw dps and overall these are just the three builds that i find the most useful if you want to check out the builds i will link them in the description below as well or you can also hop over to my discord channel uh discord should be in the description as well and i will answer any questions stuff and also all my builds will be there all right so the next thing i want to talk about is playstyle and tips in general so like i said before i will be talking about each ability and how to use them in and why they all feel unique and when the best situation is to use them along with some other things like tech that most people probably don't know starting up we have the penetrating shot there is something that most people don't know or do that is really game changing for the bow and makes the bow feel a lot more fluid than it actually should be i guess and what i'm talking about here is the pen shot roll cancel so essentially every time you shoot an arrow your character is locked in place for a set amount of uh, frames where you can't actually roll so here it is normally here it is i'm shooting and i'm actually you see how i'm locked i'm spamming left shift and you can see how i'm locked as soon as i shoot and i'm just like stuck basically right now this tech actually lets you avoid that completely so what you want to do is you want to heavy attack and pull out the pen shot and roll right so if you want to see an action here it is Look at the difference in speed between this, right? Look at the difference in speed between this, is that, and then one more, compared to this. You see how much faster it is, and how much more, like, how much faster of a recovery time you have? This is literally what makes the bow so unique and have such a high skill ceiling in higher levels of gameplay with a, a lot of the top bows that you see in a lot of servers, right? They are all doing this, and I know it might seem a little bit cliche or whatever at first. Not only does this make like faster gameplay, but it allows you to dodge things a lot easier. Gets you used to like a special kind of timing. The one downside about this is I noticed that when I first started doing this tech, I would always greed my pen shot to keep this like tech going. But I think also another big skill gap because of this is knowing when to use your penetrating shots is a very important skill that you want to have. And that's what makes this game feel so much more in depth than it actually is is because of this one ability and this one cancel making the game feel extremely fresh every time in every situation where i'm like okay do i want to shoot my pen shot now for extra burst or do i want to hold it to be able to roll faster you know and that's basically the biggest thing about pen shot that everybody should be trying to learn but if not if that's okay too 
this is purely like a min max thing and just something I want to show off because I'm sure you see it like, oh, how is that guy moving so fast? You know, like, why does it look like he rolls a lot faster than I do? Well, there it is, and it's out, right? The, <laughs> the tech is leaked. Next up, we have Explosive Arrow, high burst DPS ability, almost like in the game, honestly. There's no real way to use Explosive Arrow other than the fact that you want to aim for the body. Now, I know a lot of people tend to not take these last perks and they tend to just aim for the floor that is a massive dps loss like you're losing so much damage you're scared of missing the explosive shot which is why my heavy attacks into an explosive arrow do so much damage because i'm going for the body i'm not trying to aim at the ground for them and lose out on the extra 45 percent damage the radius is 2.5 meters right but because of contained detonation it is actually reduced to 1.3 meters but like I said, this does not matter because you should be aiming for the body with this ability because of how much damage it actually does. So if you can see here, it does 50% weapon damage plus an additional 170% weapon damage just from the explosive itself. So when you connect the arrow to a body and you get the extra 170% damage, it's a total of 220% damage on one ability, which is actually absurd. Another big factor of the explosive arrow is the fact that it actually does fire damage. So not only is it a good balance between doing full thrust damage with the bow, you can actually do 170% fire damage to an enemy as well. But moving on, we have something kind of like a, a mix of two abilities. This is specifically useful in duels, but the evade shot into the rapid shot combo. Hitting a normal evade shot is fine, right? And you get the stagger off, but you can't really follow it up with anything. But with this evade shot, rapid shot tech, you actually can, which is pretty game changing in a lot of duels. When you hit somebody with an evade shot and you instantly press rapid shot as soon as they're staggered and you land on the ground, you hit a guaranteed arrow 100% of the time. No matter ping, no matter what, doesn't matter, right? If you stagger them with the evade shot and then you press rapid shot instantly, it will connect. Not only just a 90% uh, evade shot damage, you're also getting the extra 100%. It's guaranteed 200% weapon damage and it's definitely a combo that you wanna run if you're running evade shot. The evade shot, expo build you're using a shot more defensively rather than like getting that little extra burst with rapid shot but again it's something that i want to talk about that most bow players don't know it's just something that uh, you should have to think about like oh should i hold my evade shot until my rapid shot comes up or you know vice versa that this is what makes the bow feel so in in depth than it actually like is on the surface you know one thing i didn't touch on is rain of arrows and poison shot are just absolutely garbage like there's no reason for you to use these in any PvP scenario. I know some people like to use Poison for the weekend, but I'm sorry, it is just not worth giving up an ability on the bar. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the heavy attacks for the bow. The heavy attacks literally make the bow gameplay. The heavy attacks are so important to the kit of the bow. Are you using heavy attacks as often as you possibly can? That is where all your damage comes from and all your burst comes from. 90% of the time you're using heavy attacks, 10% of the time using lights and this is because of how much how many different burst combos you have with heavy attack another playstyle tip that I can give is heavy attacks into pen shot instant 300% weapon damage same thing with heavy attack into explosive arrow huge damage heavy attack rapid shot huge damage you know what I'm saying heavy attacks are so important to using the bow efficiently and as uh, if you want as much high DPS and burst as you can get. About 10% of the time, you might use a light attack to catch an enemy off guard or, you know, finish an enemy off who's trying to run away. Mainly, you're using heavy attacks, which actually leads me to the next thing I want to talk about, which is the importance of timing. I am holding my heavy attack until I see them roll or until I see them use an ability that locks them in animation. When an enemy rolls, there is a little window between us the second roll that you can actually get a shot off as well aiming at them gives them that fear and you basically just want to wait you you want to wait for those dodges essentially and that's that's your opening for using the heavy attacks knowing when to use your heavy attacks is super important to to learning how to min max your damage for the bow another one is predictive gameplay so this one is more general than the bow but I still want to talk about it anyways. Seeing your enemy and like what they're using, kind of like thinking about, okay, what's the meta or what, what could they possibly have on that weapon that, you know, might affect me negatively, right? Like, let's say uh, you see a great axe charging at you, right? 
you see a great axe charge at you and you're like okay so now he can use reap he can use grab well or he can use like whirlwind right so that's you already had that in your mind and you're like understanding how to play off that is important being able to win most of your fights especially in 1v1s because knowing what they have depending on their positioning and depending on you know how they're playing is actually a super big thing that most people don't actually realize this one like i said kind of comes with just playing the game getting used to the game but it's also it's still very important to the bow gameplay in general now the final thing that i want to say is uh just take the hard fights you know don't just be blasting arrows through the door in OPR and playing distance all the time. Sometimes you just have to go and take those 1v1s versus melee and close range classes or maybe even 2v1s if you're just built like that. And you may not win all of them but like trust me this is how you get better at the game and as a player and learn more about PvP. So yeah just go and take those hard fights whenever you can. And uh, yeah if you made it this far I appreciate you all for being here because this video took many hours to make and i would appreciate if you guys could sub like and comment it would really mean a lot to me seriously like i'm trying to get 1000 subs by the end of may and also if you have any other questions or just want to catch chill and catch me live at twitch.tv slash a dorian 510 i usually stream past 8 est on every day most of the time so if you just catch me there and i'll be playing new world more than half the time sometimes i like to switch it up and yep thank you all and appreciate you all for being here and peace out <laughs>